Hi folks, Nine Tone Nelson here. It's a beautiful day, so I decided to make another video. I'm gonna be riding up the lakeshore of Lake Michigan from the tip of Chicago up to just shy of Wisconsin. As you can see the lake behind me, I'm sitting out here right on the water, in the rocks that uh, line the shore. And I'm gonna be going all the way north from here, seeing the nice views couple things along the way I might uh, discuss but my primary discussion today is probably going to be something along the lines of getting out on the bike for the new season so let's go and let's enjoy and as you can see guys today I'm riding the YZF finally got everything done on her to satisfaction so taking her out for her second ride of the season the first was a little test ride around the neighborhood Today we get to put her in a position where she can prove her worth, which she always does. Well, that was an interesting encounter I didn't expect to meet Poopy McTortoise Butt. I don't blame him. He's not fun. Hey, the strangest things, right? All right, folks, here we go. Lakeshore of Lakeshore of Lake Michigan on Sheridan Road. From the north side of Chicago, the very, very north side, up through to uh, around Lake Bluff, North Chicago, and all places in between. So as I said, it's a gorgeous day today, and before I forget, may the 4th be with you. You may see this a few days later than the 4th of May, but I hope you all have a wonderful and joyous interstellar day. So here we've crossed over into Evanston from Chicago, the first suburb north, where Northwestern University is located. Many people know it for that purpose, or from that reference. We'll ride by there. Sheridan Road passes right alongside it, through the general campus area. And we're going to talk a bit about what it's like to Oh crap, I forgot to turn on my other camera. So as I was saying, we're going to talk about getting on the bike for the first time, be it a new bike to you or after the off season. Now a lot of people might think, well, why do we need to talk about getting on a bike after the off-season? I know how to ride, I've been riding for years, so on and so forth. Well, even after being off the bike for a short time, we have a tendency to forget our skills. They do seem to perish a bit. They are perishable skills. They will be lost over time without practice. And even a short season off can make a difference. It won't necessarily be highly impactful, but you may find yourself realizing too late, oh crap, I'm a little slow on that, or uh, wow, I could have reacted better. I've been in that situation before. So, the point of all of this is, if you've been off the bike for a while, or if you're just getting on a bike for 
more or less the first time, take your time. Don't rush it. Give yourself some grace and some patience to get yourself back to the skill level you need in order to ride safely. Get acclimated or reacclimated with your motorcycle. Make sure you know where things sit with relation to how you are on the bike. You know, your feet, depending on where the foot controls are, uh, may not be as close or as far from those controls as you may hope or believe. Same with your hands. Generally, all those things are in the same place for the most part. But especially if you're a new rider, you may not have the muscle memory that you need to find them instantly when the situation calls for it. And that is vitally important. If you are unable to respond to a situation because you're fumbling for your shifter or your brake pedal, your rear brake pedal, if you are reacting in a panic and you grab more brake than you thought you were going to. Grab the clutch by mistake instead of the brake. You might find yourself wishing you had put a little time into practice. And that's a vital thing. You should practice all the time. Not just at the onset of the season, but throughout. By the way, here we are at Northwestern University. Beautiful campus. It's changed a lot over the years. I grew up in this area. I used to loiter down in this area quite a bit. And I can tell you that things look the same, but they don't. It's an impressive campus, very large. But back to the topic at hand. When you get on a bike, you want to be sure that you understand it. Your expectations of it will be met and that you're riding within your abilities. I've been in situations where, well, every year I change motorcycles. My ST1100 is my winter bike and I spend most of the cold season on that. I have ridden this one, the LEO, a few times in cold weather, but it's not my preferred because I don't have the wind coverage that I would like to have in cold weather. But because I do go between the two motorcycles, I have a different situation each time. Speaking of controls, you know, I'm, I'm in a different riding position. The controls are essentially the same. The clutch side handlebar has all the same controls, turn signal, brights, choke lever, and the throttle side same controls, throttle, engine off, horn, and front brake. But if I were to hop on, say, a Harley or a Beamer, those turn signals are not in the same place. There's one on each side, and you need to become accustomed to that. Not only do you need to become accustomed to the position, but as to how to activate and deactivate them. Not every mo motorcycle is exactly the same jump on some uh, older style bikes or 
newer bikes fashioned after older style bikes and you'll find that the ignition is in a different location than you might expect it won't necessarily be up here on the handlebar or on the uh, triple tree or anything up front in front of you may well it will most likely be down on the side uh, between the pistons so don't expect the motorcycle to work perfectly for you if you're not prepared to ride it the way it's been designed to ride and you be used handling will be different going from this to the Honda and vice versa it's a different world the Honda is longer longer wheelbase heavier it is nimble for its size but by comparison this is much more nimble it will react more quickly and therefore in some cases can be twitchy it has a harder suspension due to its purpose of build as a sport bike so some roads that would be nice and smooth on the Honda are not going to be so much with this and that can not just affect its handling but my personal handling of the situation you know, that could throw me off somehow hey that, that, that large bump has given me such a jolt and take my concentration for a moment after riding for a while I'll be reacclimated and know what to expect and some other things as simple as the uh, throttle and the clutch the play that exists in them by comparison to the other is going to vary the clutch may let out sooner on one than the other the throttle may do the same you have to give yourself a chance to get reaccustomed I know every year when I switch over I do find myself having a little trouble with the clutch on both the bikes they're different engines one revs higher than the other one clutch engages a little sooner and it's obvious not only will you see it, you will hear it. I'd hate to be in a situation where I have to jump on one or the other during that switch and have to run off somewhere quickly and find myself killing the bike because the, or killing the engine because I just wasn't prepared to handle it properly. So, even as a seasoned rider and especially as a new rider put the time into it it's worth it so this uh this road here sheridan road it's part of the circle tour for lake michigan it actually goes all the way around and well i shouldn't say the road does but the Circle Tour does, and this connects through most of it on the Illinois side. Actually, I believe all of it. As I've ridden it, I should know. I did my iron butt on that a number of years back using the uh, ST1100. And I'm very proud of that. The only thing I'm not proud of is the fact that I didn't turn in all the documentation when I was done and never actually obtained my certificate. But I earned it nonetheless. I have the proof for it. I may take the time to send all that in one day. It's less important for me to have the piece of paper, more important for me to have the experience. And that was a lot of fun. I may do it again one day on this guy. So, back to Sheridan Road. It's a beautiful, beautiful route. And the trees are full bloom. It's gorgeous, it's shady. Right now you see all the colors coming out, and all the beautiful houses, all different forms of architecture, 
some much more unique than others. I'll show you some examples of that a little bit into this video. I'll show you two houses in particular that might be of interest to some people. Some history of the area. Right here we're coming into Kenilworth, which as a bit of trivia is one of the wealthiest villages or communities in the United States. From what I understand in, I think it was 2018, it ranked number eight. Don't know where it is now, but very affluent area. Beautiful homes. And that's a pretty small town as well. I don't know the actual size of the town or its population. I believe the population somewhere the 24,000. Maybe less. Don't quote me. But the other end of it, I can actually uh, see is up around the corner there past this traffic light. It does go a bit to the west from here. Can't go much further to the east because it'll be in the water. But uh, beautiful place. Most of the towns directly north of Chicago on Sheridan Road are very gorgeous. Not just in the uh, in the appearances of the uh, properties, just as a whole, the, the town, the structures, the infrastructure itself, for example, the municipal areas very well designed very nice very very old in some cases too but um, updated and upgraded very nicely yeah I forgot to mention back when I started the uh, video here I was going around Calvary Cemetery there which is um, very large cemetery and kind of maybe just locally but kind of well known for having a few uh, old time Chicago mafiosos interred there there was rumor that that was where Al Capone's body was really buried I have no idea if that's fact or not but it's a fun bit of folklore there's also uh, Seaweed Charlie, who walks through the cemetery every Halloween searching for a place to rest after his wartime plane was downed in Lake Michigan, just off the shore. And he has since been trying to find peace. There's a few good stories to every cemetery but that's the, those are the two that I have heard for Calvary by the way we are well out of Kenilworth by now into Winnetka hey folks this ride ended up being a lot longer than I remembered so as a result I have a lot more footage to edit through so to make this easier for both you to enjoy and me to complete I'm going to break this up into three parts. This is the end of part one, and I appreciate you for sticking around, and I hope you've enjoyed it. Please do feel free to suggest to your friends that they subscribe, and if you haven't, please do the same. If you have any questions or comments at this point, post them down in the comment section below, and I will gladly get back to you on those. Also, don't forget, as I always say, ride safe, ride smart, 
and have fun. Bye.